Welcome to The Yin Project. I'm your host, Emily Bevan. Today we are talking with Stacey Lapik. She's been an interior designer for over 35 years, has been named one of America's top 10 designers to watch by Design Times Magazine, one of the top 100 interior designers in North America by Blink Art Resources, and is the winner of multiple national design awards. Her goal is simple, to co-create with her clients in the home of their dreams with responsive and comprehensive solutions and timeless, beautiful results. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Emily. Thanks so much for coming on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So I want to start talking about you're an interior designer. You've won some fantastic awards. You've been in the business for a really long time. And when you and I first met, you talked to me about biophilic design. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I had never heard of before. Um, and I'm not ashamed <laughs> in my ignorance to admit yeah. it. Um, and I had asked my husband about it, and he was, and he had heard of it, and so we kind of chatted a little bit. I had done some additional research because it really piqued my interest. But let's just kind of talk about that, and and let's pretend you're you're talking about it for the first time, and, and to the listeners who might not have ever heard of sure. it before. Yeah, it's it's really quite amazing. So there's a an aspect of science called neuroaesthetics, mm-hmm. right? Kind of like beauty in the brain, how you react to um, things that are aesthetically pleasing or not. And a spoke of that is biophilic design. What that science has done is they've determined their, they, uh, the National Institute of Health, various University of Texas, a number of universities, the country of Singapore, um, have done many studies and they're ongoing. And Singapore is amazing. Have you been to Singapore? I have not, but I've seen images. So I'm I've watching spoken. the blue zones right now. Yeah. And I think that Singapore is a blue zone. I'm not quite sure. Did you watch that special on Netflix? I didn't. So they were talking about uh, about Singapore. I, th- I think it's a blue zone. And they're they're what they're trying to do now is replicate blue zones. They're mm. actually doing it in Petaluma. Did you know yeah, that? I did not. Yeah, they're trying to make Petaluma an official blue zone. There's going to be all these programs that they're rolling out, and it's, like, super exciting. They they started one, I believe – I know I'm totally getting us off the no, subject. They'll bring us right back on. Um, in Minnesota, they found – you know, it has to be, like, the right demographic um, in terms of age and uh, so- population size, mm-hmm. uh, distance to a city center, that kind of thing. And they they made kind of a test of a blue zone there. Wow. And they were able to increase um, uh, life expectancy by a couple of years, which they were super excited about. So now they're trying to roll out blue zones in other areas. Going back to Singapore – it's very expensive to own a car in Singapore. It's like two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars because they're trying to encourage everyone to be able to walk, and the amount of green space, which I know is kind of what you're probably alluding to, mm-hmm. is just everywhere because it's an island. Like they've created yeah. this just amazing city. I, I really, really want to go to Singapore. It looks so beautiful. I saw an image of a building um, in maybe a class, one of the classes I've taken or something, and the skin of the building, let's say there's there's the skin of the outside of the building, right. and then there's about 12 or 18 inches, and then there's the outside of the building. Right. And in that space, is uh, green. green. Yeah. Yeah, living all they have living all trees these and plants really and intricate like living roofs and everything mm-hmm. and I find that so fascinating just from a just from a building materials, you know, point of view and my mind immediately goes to like pests and different <laughs> organisms, but I know there's ways to do it where they can really interact with each other. Yeah. But they were yeah, they had an example of all these living roofs and that's where they would house um, people that were older so they could have access to the living roofs. And Singapore seems like they're doing something right. They are doing something yeah. right, yeah. It's it's really fascinating. So they've been at the forefront of a lot of these studies as well. Um, an architect, Dan Ruggles, uh, wrote a book. I can't think of the name of it. But he was one of the first to pull all these elements together. 
and they determined that there are these 15 specific patterns mm -hmm. that are found in nature. And when those are incorporated into the built environment, into your home, into an office, you know, a, a medical facility, whatever, it, they've been measurably proven to do things like um, regulate your heart rate and mm -hmm. lower blood pressure and increase the flow of serotonin and lower cortisol levels. There are certain patterns you can use to increase creativity. To um, Let's talk about some of those. Yeah. So basically, they're divided into three categories. Biophilic design is divided into three categories. There's nature in the space. Mm -hmm. And what that is are things that are natural in the space. So in here, we've got wood. We've got a plant. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you have the sound of water. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's airflow that's inconsistent. You know, just like if you had open windows, how that feels. There may be um, sporadic bird song. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a recording that goes over and over mm -hmm. again, but it's here and there and here and there. Mm -hmm. um, to all, all those aspects of nature that put you in your natural environment. Mm -hmm. The second uh, category are called natural analogs. And what those are, just like what analogs mean, things that are analogous to nature. Mm -hmm. So prints, you know, natural animals or plants or flowers or trees uh, woven into rugs or printed mm, on a okay. fabric or, um, you know, any number of things. There are bowls that are made to look like stone or you know, things like Artwork. that. Artwork. Artwork is a great example. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the last category is nature of the space. So these are the experiences of being in an environment. There's one called risk and peril. Mm. So you, we get excited when we're kind of feel something a little risky, like, like glass floors, oh, like yeah. right at MoMA. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so you want some railings. risk and peril in your house? It gets you, it's it's kind of, you don't want it constant, but you want the experience of it here and there. Like give me another example of, of um, what's another an example average of house. An average house risk. Is it like uh, a bunch of crap all over the floor? In, no, that your that kids you're gonna slip on. <laughs> you're gonna slip on, because I have a lot of risk of peril at my house with two kids at home. <laughs> yeah, no. Waking up in the middle of the night, am I gonna step on a Lego? Like oh my that's gosh. real risk and peril. That is very risk, <laughs> risk and peril. <laughs> yeah, um, think more like uh, glass railings. Okay. You know, glass banisters, something okay. like that might might allude to that. Another is the sense of refuge. So you like a place where, like a wingback chair in front of a fireplace, right? Yeah. You're cozy. Yeah. Or a I am all about chairs with arms. I mm. have to have a chair with an arm. If not, yeah. I, I, I just feel so secure and snug. And if I don't, I like just feel loose. I do, and I feel exposed. I feel I, I really like that like definition. Like, yeah. and we're sitting in chairs with arms right now, and it just it makes me feel secure and and stable. So, is that kind of a good example? That's that is a good okay. example. Um, imagine you are a caveman, mm -hmm. and your cave is up on the side of of a hill, and you've got an overhang to protect you mm -hmm. from rain. And you can see, you have prospect, which is another uh, pattern. You can see out really far, so you could see if something bad is coming. Okay, tell me a little bit more about prospect, because right now I'm putting myself, I'm on two acres, we have, we we have a, we don't, we have a view. We mm -hmm. have like valley, we have like kind of hills. Nice. I'm, I'm all about seeing, we don't have, you know, the quintessential like Petaluma Hills or like the winery, mm -hmm. the grape view and, you know, off mountain type view. We have some of that in in other parts of our house, but our backyard, kind of the money space, it's probably an acre in the back, but we can see really far. And to me, that's that I really, even though it's not like a mountain, the ability to see far mm -hmm. makes me feel something what what am i feeling what is that you're feeling a sense of of Expand control and power oh because you can 
It's like the power position in Feng Shui. I can shui, see what's right? coming. You can see what's coming. Because sometimes there will be a car, like a truck, mm-hmm. up on the hill. Very rarely, because I think it's a, I don't know exactly where it, I don't know where mm-hmm. this is. It's so far away. But I can see this, a truck every now and again. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's going on up there? There's a truck up there. Yeah. Or the neighbors will have sheep in the winter and their their lot is uh, perpendicular to ours, so we can see them. So I can see them from afar, and mm-hmm. when they come, I'm like, oh, there's the sheep. Yeah. So is that that's what it, I'm? Yeah. I'm like surveying my surroundings. Exactly. Okay. And inside a home, it could be. Um, it's one of the reasons people liked great rooms, right? Because you could be in the kitchen and you could see the kids. Right, you know, or if you. So that's position- really funny because I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you. But oh, there's fine. a spot on my couch where this one spot I can see all the way past past our little eat-in kitchen area, past the kitchen, all the way to the garage door. Mm-hmm. So it's a very long expanse, and that's my favorite spot to sit on the couch because I can yeah. I have this long sight path. There are pros and cons to that. Okay. So the good thing is that, yes, you have that prospect. You mm-hmm. can see that. The con is like if you've ever been in a building or even a house that has a very long, thin hallway. Yes. That's very disconcerting. Okay. Right? That's why when you, if you have something like that, you want to break it up with a lot of little rugs, for example, that'll mm-hmm. create horizontal yeah. lines or whatever. Um, there's a number of different tricks you could use. But the idea of having a meandering path Mm -hmm. is very comforting to us. So how do you create a little curve Mm -hmm. or a little meander or put a sound over here Mm -hmm. so you can't quite see it? Mm -hmm. There's a little sense of mystery, Mm -hmm. which is another Mm -hmm. pattern. Um, So you've got a little sense of mystery and you get to, uh, you know, oh, what is that? So it's not a risky feeling, right? But it's just a, 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 a questioning, right. right? And an expansion of it. It helps you think and helps you be creative. And okay. you know what could it be? Um, my favorite pattern uh, just came along a few years ago, and they've determined that the concept of awe mm. is a pattern. And there was a book. Darn, I can't think of the author's names. Um, Susan, oh, I'll mess it up. I don't remember. But we'll find book, it. We'll figure it out and we'll put it in the show yeah, notes. A book just came out called Awe. Okay. And the concept of awe is critical, really, for our happiness, right? If you want to be happy, experience awe. Experience you know, an amazing sunset mm-hmm. or a photograph that just takes your breath away. Yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge. Or, Anytime okay, you go into yeah. San Francisco, there is a level of just, you know, you're driving in Pack Heights or you're driving in Twin Peaks mm-hmm. and you're on market, upper market, and you can look down onto the city. There is, there's a massive awe. Yeah. Maybe I'll use that in some of my marketing <laughs> copy. You know what's really forward. cool? If you go, if you're coming from Marin and you go th- into the tunnel, and then you pay attention to the end of the tunnel, yeah. And the bridge just goes like this, yeah, yeah. It's all, and it's yeah, every single time. Mm-hmm. And I've lived here in the Bay Area for over ten years. Yeah, I don't think you, I, I could never go across the Golden Gate Bridge and be like, yeah, there it is. You know, been there, done that. Another bridge, another, yeah. you know, yeah. every single time because it's different every single day, yeah. every single hour. It's different with the fog and the light and. and just everything. Yeah, that's yeah. The incredible. city to me is very awe, but the, the you know the Petaluma, the Sonoma countryside, especially in the winter, driving around, mm-hmm. you're just like wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, and you can get that feeling. So, from, how do you get awe into your own into the physical your physical environment? Um, it could be a view, a little moment mm-hmm. in your house. You know the way you create a vignette somewhere, and it's like. Oh, and everything is just placed perfectly, mm-hmm. so it just feels really good, and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, that Yeah, that I know that works. feeling. Right. So I know like that feeling. That. A clean, for me, because I have little mm-hmm. kids, like, after the cleaners come, yeah. I'm like, wow, this looks so good. <laughs> or you can see, like, the potential of, yeah. 
or when you you have like a like a holiday or whatever like that little vignette that if you get a new candle and you have mm-hmm. a new this and you're putting the seasonal item in and it just looks so like well-rounded yeah, yeah. I, I i can see that you can also find on your kids mm-hmm. right they'll do something that's like wow yeah yeah you know, every day they're becoming little beings yeah. you know oh, yeah they are for yeah sure. so in humans you can find mm-hmm. awe moments mm-hmm. um what are the, yeah, some other ones in your, amazing. what are some other ones in your house in my house that are awe um, no, not particularly odd. Just some of the there were fifteen total principles. Oh, and I okay. Feel like we talked about a couple of them. Um, having uh, having a water element is really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, some sort of water sculpture, mm-hmm. so you get the benefit of a beautiful sculpture, a beautiful piece of art, plus the addition inside of water. your house or mm-hmm. like in your yard, in your in your actual house. I would I would love to see it both places, mm-hmm. but you can certainly have it inside. I've put um, water sculptures on um there's an amazing sculptor archie held Mm -hmm. i don't know if you know him but uh he did the sculpture in front of um oh what's the name of that japanese restaurant on caledonia in sausalito sushi ron oh okay Sushi um anyway he did this beautiful sculpture uh bronze and i have it right at the entry as soon as you walk into the client's house and you hear the you hear the sound and it immediately sort of puts you at peace yeah yeah. yeah, I've actually been wanting. There's a great outdoor fountain. Well, they actually have multiple. I think they have indoor as well. But there's a fountain store on Gravenstein in Sebastopol. Oh yeah, um, it's a garden store. I think it's called Absolute Garden, oh, and they have some really beautiful fountains. And I've been thinking, like, I really want a fountain. And my husband thinks I'm crazy, but um, really one of our nice. friends has like a kitty cat water. Uh, filter I and even like listening to that it's like oh that's nice or even like yeah. I remember as a, a little girl like I used to really enjoy listening to the fish tank because I had like a fish like the fish tank makes a little that's water a noise good point yeah, it's yeah. Got the bubbles it's bubbly. like the bubbling yeah yeah and I like listening to the little water tank so yeah. it's really interesting it's because it's a natural it's a natural occurrence yeah and we we want that. Mm-hmm. That's why we like fires as well and fireplaces. Yes. Right? Yes. It's comforting. And it also... It's, but it's, fires, fireplaces are like controversial right now. Well, they are because of the environment and all that. But you could still... But there is something in you as a human. Mm-hmm. So I was watching something on Netflix and they have now discovered another sub... Uh, a, a, before Homo sapiens, they discovered this other, I don't know exactly where, but another species of Homo. I remember hearing something about oh that. Oh my yeah. gosh. And they, they found them, all of their remains, and they were burying, they were having, this is like 200,000 years before we, just like they totally destroyed the timeline mm-hmm. of what we think. And it's this other species, they were much smaller than us, they were about 4852, longer arms, um, brains were about a third of the size of ours, but they were burying each other and they had tools and mm-hmm. they knew how to make fire. And so they went into this elaborate cave, this crazy cave that the, the, the researchers had a really hard time getting in. But they buried one another in this cave and they, they did an experiment where they took fire into the cave and it looked, I like it goosebumps because it looked completely different than when the researchers had all of their lights dropped in and it was yeah. like all fluorescent lighting and very, there was something so magical about having the firelight in this cave and they were kind of recreating what it would be to like drag someone to bury them in this mm-hmm. cave and drop down this massive chute and you were you were putting yourself in that situation and it was it was so powerful so to your point of like fire is there is just yeah. something in it. like I, you can't look away from a fire you can't it's 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 funny now it's kind of scary so it's I know. okay we have to deal with that but having a controlled fire it's safety it means you have food mm-hmm. you can cook food you have warmth mm-hmm. um it keeps away wild animals you know, it's um, to your to your point about how long we've been around in this body. 
you know, we've been around for now more than 200,000 years, yeah. right? We've been in the built environment for about 20,000 yeah. of those years. Yeah. So our DNA wants us to be in, yeah. you know, in nature. So that's why it's so important to bring in these elements into your home because most people spend way too much time So indoors. let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, I moved from San Francisco. I was a city girl for a decade. As we had children, we kind of slowly migrated migrated north. north. Yeah. We lived in the Presidio, which was one of the most, I mean, to live in a, uh, a park was just incredible. Um, there was a ton of nature feeling there. Um, but, you know, I still work with a lot of clients that are in the city. And mm -hmm. certainly there's a magnetism and an excitement and an energy of living in any large city. But let's talk about, let's talk about, and I know you work with clients in San Francisco as well and probably other cities. Let's talk about that because I'm just thinking about some of my clients and maybe people that are listening that are like, well, I'm in a two bedroom flat. And what do I do? And Coal yeah. Valley, like, what? this doesn't relate to me, or I can't have that. Let me tell you what an you example of a flat that I did do in Coal Valley, actually. <laughs> I did it. <clears throat> I'm not making this up. Yeah. Um, and this woman, she's a single professional woman. Okay. She bought this flat. Um, it was a two-bedroom, and she entertains a lot. She wanted to entertain a lot. She loves to cook. So when I first saw it, you know, there's the sofa against the wall and there's the TV and then there's like a table so she could put stuff down on. And that was pretty much it. It had a built-in banquette that really didn't make any sense, whatever. So what we did, it did have crown um, a plate rail going mm -hmm. around about 14 inches from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we made the main room like a dining room library mm -hmm. slash library so she could have plenty of room for guests I think the table seats 10 mm -hmm. and above the plate rail we put in a wall covering that had greenery but it was kind of abstract mm -hmm. but it was very subtle it was all it felt very natural and we had that all the way around so you had the oh and then we did uh, created some artwork I had some um, paintings uh, commissioned by this wonderful painter, Kate Salenfriend. Mm. And uh, she made this beautiful painting with trees that go up, right? Mm. And there was a skylight in the room, and she uses um, gold leaf, a little mm. bit of gold leaf in the trees. And there's a path that Did goes down. Did she paint down. on the walls? No, this okay. is a separate piece of okay. art. Um, and the art also had a pathway that went down. So you have, you know, this sense of mystery down mm -hmm. the path. It also, having that path at the end of the room, visually makes you feel like the room extends yeah. beyond, right? Yeah. The trees went up, and to then they eye. connected to the wallpaper that mm -hmm. went around the top. And we hung the painting over the plate rail. So mm -hmm. so the plate rail was, was like about here, and the painting oh, that, went up about here. I thought you here. meant art, like, a, um, you mean an actual plate rail to display plates. Right. Okay, got it. Right, got so it. there's molding yeah. detail yeah. that goes around there. So the painting was installed above, just, you know, crossed over the plate rail so that your eye continued up into the wallpaper yeah. that went around. And then we had some uh, plants, you know, large trees in this space as a design element in a self-watering container, nice. which is awesome. Nice. And um, the whole effect is that you're around trees, that you're comforted. You've yeah. got this. Did it have like a treehouse feel? Mm, it was more sophisticated than that. Yeah, like a more elegant. But it definitely had the feeling. Yeah, it was more elegant. Protection, like a feeling. Protection of and and that you were in trees. Yeah. That you were in nature. Yeah. Right. Rather than feeling that. Um, you know, you were in glass and chrome right. and whatever. Right. Yeah. I think I'm understanding your mystery a little bit more because I have a painting done uh, by a Spanish artist. And I don't love portraiture mm -hmm. because it's too personal for me. I don't like to see the face. I like the mystery Yeah. of imagining who that person is. So I have something with a woman who's holding a child and you can see the back of them. Mm-hmm. 
And then you can see their hands, they're walking into a room and her hands are like this. And so I imagine who doesn't love seeing a little baby in a yeah. carrier? And so I imagine on the other side of that, whoever's on the other side of that door, how happy they are to see her mm -hmm. and see the baby and how happy they are walking into this room. Like I just, I love the mystery of that yeah. versus seeing the actual face and having it all displayed for me. There's something very powerful in yeah, that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. Yeah, it feels great. So give me another a couple other examples um, and let's let's talk about mm -hmm. even like something that a renter because I want to give some love mm -hmm. to renters. Interest rates are 8% right now. <laughs> I have so many clients that are just, you know, everyone is kind of waiting to see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I think people are just trying to give some love. There's nothing wrong with renting. Um, not everyone needs to own a home. And so, especially in San Francisco, you know, people have rent control mm -hmm. apartments. A lot of the trend now is you hold on to your rent controlled apartment and you buy something out of state for as an investment. Right. You buy multiple things out of state and then you hold on to that. So, if you're, what are some things that you can do? Um, to kind of bring in nature mm -hmm. and um, also like everyone is so stressed out right now. There's a lot of world events that we're not even going to talk about. Yeah. Like what are just some like easy things or even maybe something at your desk that you could mm -hmm. bring in, but maybe more than just a plant. Like what are, what are some things that can help like, you know, yeah. relax you? I have always collected shells and collect mm -hmm. rocks, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, not jude rocks, but you know, like little rocks or driftwood, things like that. Mm -hmm. If you like collecting those things, gather them and make a, you know, don't have them like spread out all over the place, put them sort of in a area. Mm -hmm. And that, just that is comforting. It's a natural material. Using natural materials and organic fabrics on your, you know, your upholstery. Mm -hmm. You can use um, prints that have floral patterns or trees mm -hmm. or there's an amazing wallpaper and um, I know you're renting but there's also a lot of wallpaper somebody told me but I haven't found it yet that is easy it's to peelable, take down yeah. right yeah. so you can stick it up um, I think Urban Outfitters has carries a lot of that peel and stick oh, okay. wallpaper so that's a great great thing mm -hmm. to do Scalamandre makes this beautiful uh, wallpaper of like these birch trees. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have seen that. That was yeah. a very, very popular wallpaper for a while. It's gorgeous. And it has, um, when it's done on silk, it has a little bit of a sheen yes, to it. Yes, I've seen that so one. So it reflects light. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people were doing that in their nurseries. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I love that pattern. Yeah. So they're, um, you know, th those are ways. Plants are great mm -hmm. and they clean the air. They're, there's so many reasons to have plants. And if you work with a plant person who knows what they're doing, um, Felicia Schoenberg is a great woman in San Rafael who does plants. And she knows what plants are going to be handled, are going to handle certain light mm -hmm. well in certain environments and which ones to get. Um, so those are always good. The uh, movable fountains having something nice and cozy so you have a feeling of refuge. Mm -hmm. So even just a really nice blanket mm -hmm. that's draped over the sofa, that's nice and cozy for mm -hmm. you to sit in. I'm thinking herbs too. There's so mm -hmm. many um, little like herb gardens that you can have oh, yeah, now Yeah, the kitchen inside. sill. Yeah. Yeah, th that's great. Yeah. And it tastes good too. Yeah, right? exactly. And it smells great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, having a, a, an aquarium, you know, do you like I fish? Know. I know. I, I don't want to clean it, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, my mother-in-law had a huge like saltwater tank, mm. and oh, they're so amazing. Yeah, I know. Like, the, there are a lot of maintenance and a lot of work, but that's. I mean, how, yeah. you're so connected with nature there, and you can be such mm -hmm. an observer. Like, you don't have to enter. You know, having an animal is different, caring right. for it, but like the fish, you can just kind of sit and just yeah you know, observe what's going on, which I think is also, there's like a mystery. There is like a mystery. In that, because you're not involved. You can't control. <laughs> Sometimes as someone who uh, is likes to have things controlled, I also love to fully give it up. Yeah. And like being able to just watch fish kind of just do what they're going to do. And it has nothing to do with me. Like 
there's yeah. something very gratifying they in that. make great room dividers as well yes yeah, she had the way she had it was behind her sofa going up a staircase mm-hmm. and i i loved how it kind of just like divided the yeah. room yeah yeah and then you but can I don't see it see, from different sides you know I, I i've been a lot of houses i've been i just toured some amazing luxury property yesterday I cannot tell you the last time I saw like a saltwater fish tank in someone's house. Because it takes care. Yeah. Yeah, it takes care. There are people who can come in and take care of your plants. Right. I don't know if people could no, come in. No, they do. She had someone. I imagine there must be. Yeah. There, I mean, there's somebody for everybody. Yeah. And what she wound up draining it um, and wound up selling that house uh, later on. But she, she filled it with some beautiful shells and it still actually looked really pretty, mm. even though there weren't, there yeah. weren't fish in there. Yeah. Anything so else people can do ways. in the city? And, and what if you're um, in a really busy city? Like, let's say you're in New York, mm-hmm. you know, where it's just constant beep, beep, honk, honk. How do you, is there anything else you can do to, like, combat the city noise? Yeah, double pane, triple pane yeah. windows. Yeah. Um, or having a sound in, in your house that is... Again, I always sleep. Slept, I always slept with a sound machine mm-hmm. because I needed that white noise. Yeah, a lot of people do like that. There, what's what's a little disconcerting are these high rises that the windows don't open, right? Yes, I know. So they have fresh air coming in, but it's consistent. It's this constant thing. So it doesn't allow. A lot of the you... high rises also in the bathrooms. You have to have they have for code now. They have to have the fan on all the time it never shuts off oh boy yeah yeah which that's, like that's can be annoying fair. to some people you know what th- other things that you could do though that could help and this could be in the city or or anywhere if you have for example sheer drapery mm-hmm. that moves yes. with it so it moves with the breeze yeah. and it it changes with the sun things mm-hmm. are dappled differently mm-hmm. with sunlight that's very comforting rather than having very staid formal drapes that just hang right, yes, right? yeah there's some um, there's there. a place for that but for the most part to feel a little bit more gentle and then to get the sense of light coming in and out mm-hmm. and um you know so even a, in a high rise that's like a fishbowl you could do that you know that i suppose maybe you could put a little fan behind it or something mm-hmm. you know a little, one of those mini mm-hmm. you know handheld fans or something to help move the move the drapery so you get that effect um anything else before we move on regarding like city things that you could do i could go on and on so (laughs) yeah well well, let's let's talk about scent because i feel like that's something is that something that's in biophilic design uh yeah can be okay for sure okay yeah scent is really important to me um has a ton of memory and uh the when i became when i was pregnant I stopped wearing all perfumes because of the things that it can do mm-hmm. to your hormones. And then I never really got back to wearing it. I still yeah. can appreciate some scents. But the older I get, the more sensitive I am to scents. And I really cannot use mo- most candles. Um, they have to be like a natural scent to me. I don't know what they put in Diptyque. I don't really want to know because I still love my diptyque candles so much. I'm sure there's some like artificial type things in there. Um, I love the French brand of incense. Mm. Um, I'm not, I I forget the name. I think it's N. Ken's. Um, Like I love scent so much, but I'm, I guess my question is like, what are your thoughts on it? And, we're exposed to so much artifact. I mean, I'm the kind of person that if I go down the grocery store aisle where the soap and the laundry detergent mm-hmm. and all of that is, I'm like, this smells like cancer. I have to get mm-hmm. out of here. Like, it really, really affects me. And even my mom wears Tide and I can't even be around her. I'm like, mom, you stink. She's like, this is clean. And I'm like, I can smell the fragrance Tide and it's it's too strong for me. So tell me, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I no, I'm I'm right along with you. I get everything unscented. All the, yeah, you know, yeah. Anything that's any of that stuff is the unscented. only thing you know. Like I like these lavender shower bombs, mm-hmm. for example. But it's a very subtle sense. If I use um, diffusers, I love diffusers, mm-hmm. 
and you can get, you know, organic essences mm -hmm. that are, you know, they're great and you can control how strong you want it. Mm -hmm. So it could be very subtle. Our noses, if I remember this correctly, it's the first, it's, it's the most dominant of our, Senses. like you said, memories, yeah. right? So we can smell something, it'll take us back to yeah. when we were three. Yeah. And it's the last um, sense to leave us as we get older. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's interesting. interesting. And I wanna say, I wanna put a caveat on that, that I'm not sure where I read that or how long yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. But um, but it makes sense. Yeah, I used to wear perfume, and I don't anymore. You don't. I don't. Why not? Um, it was just too much. It's too much. I just yeah. And then you're kind of stuck with it too. Yeah, I mean, I would do something pretty light, but it was still. Um, you know, when I wore it was when I was working in the city a lot. Interesting. I, I feel yeah. like in general people don't wear as much perfume. Yeah. But um, I went out to eat the other day and there was a woman um, sitting at the table behind me mm -hmm. that was wearing perfume and I had to move. Yeah. It was it was just too much. It's too much. But having scents that are natural mm -hmm. and that are subtle is can be wonderful. If mm -hmm. you like the smell of eucalyptus, some people can't stand it. Oh, I love it. But it's so, you know, use a little bit of eucalyptus. Yeah. That's why diffusers are so wonderful. Are you doing natural oil diffusers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. organic and all that. Yeah. With natural oil. So you're doing your own and making it. Yeah, I, th I just put drops yeah. in the water and, and I'll mix a bunch. I need to do that more. I feel like yeah. there aren't a lot of like really beautiful diffusers that are like, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, there's some that are okay. You know, if you go to a, um, oh, where would you find a really beautiful one? I want a really beautiful one. You can find really pretty one. wood ones. and Like the one I have, it like looks very drugstore. Yeah, you don't want to do a drugstore yeah. one. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful ones on the okay. market. Okay, I need to go look for some yeah. beautiful diffusers. And um, you can buy case, little um, boxes of like, 12 different scents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of That are fun scents. and then you can mix them up, yeah. you know, like lavender and sage and lemon. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, that's kind of nice. You feel like you're in a spa. Like, yeah. It smells when you go in a spa. So my dad um, had a fall and he's he's essentially quadriplegic and mm. is home in Ohio. And that was the first thing I did. Well, I got him an orchid and some plants. <laughs> See, <laughs> I think that yeah. people don't realize they're doing these things without right. you know you just are, and I got like and I got him yeah. a, a nice a little bamboo diffuser just mm. to like there's a lot of smells going on there yeah. because he's he's bedridden but also like his favorite one is like lemon um, and it's like super uplifting and it's like I think it's yeah. cheer me up buttercup and I, I think it's now is the brand um, but he like loves it and it like makes him happier yeah. and then there's more therapeutic ones frankincense is a really great one that has helped a lot of with his swelling yeah. So I'm like all about the essential oils. So I want to switch gears. Um, thank you for sharing about biophilic design. I think yeah. it's like f really fascinating. And I want to switch gears because there, I don't want to say there's a back, I don't want to say there's a backlash. You know, we have this like pendulum and the pendulum is like shifting all the time mm -hmm. in politics and S social issues and, and everything. And the thing that I'm kind of seeing right now is I'm seeing like love to renters, which I love mm -hmm. because in our industry, there's always emphasis on like, buy now, buy, buy, you should be buying, you're wasting mm -hmm. your money. Like for a lot of people, it might just not be feasible. If you don't have like a big liquidity event and have this, or you don't receive, you know, energy intergenerational wealth from a family member or have some sort of, you might, it's really hard to save money to buy something like in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, it just people, might not be in the cards for you, and that's okay. That's people who rent; they don't have to worry about house repairs. Oh my and gosh. property taxes, yeah. and they don't, yeah. you know, so there's a, there's good and bad for everything. So I'm yeah. seeing like love to the renters, and then I'm also seeing this movement. I think of people that are like love the house that you're in. Mm -hmm. And don't get caught up in the HGTV trends. <laughs> you don't need white subway, t although I love white subway tile. I think it's super classic, and we'll talk about this. But you don't need all black and white in your house, and you don't need this, and you don't need that, and da-da-da-da-da. And, like, 
love the house that you're in and don't fall into this like lie is how it's kind of being positioned of like, you need the latest and greatest. Your house needs to look like HGTV. Um, So I want to talk about that a a little bit because I see a lot of houses. I see, I see it all. I'm kind of, we're kind of like doctors. Like when we go on listing appointments, clients are like, oh, my house is so messy. And we're like, we've seen it all. All Like we don't, we like there's nothing that you could have where we would be like, oh my gosh, did you see so-and-so's house? We would never do that. It's also just not professional, but like literally we've seen it all. Um, And I've seen good flips Mm -hmm. and I've seen like super trendy flips where I'm like, this is so going to look like 2023 or 2019 or what have you. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, what you're seeing in trends. How closely do you pay, pay attention to trends? The media loves to talk about trends. Pantone color of the friggin' year, uh, the yeah. bear color of the year, the Benjamin Moore color of the year. Like, let's change everything. Mm-hmm. Like, just talk to me a little bit about um, what you think of it personally, professionally, and then, like, what are clients, like, coming to you for? Okay, there's a lot to I unpack know. there. I so. do. <laughs> I have a bad habit in these podcasts of, like, asking really... <laughs> That's okay. I like asked like six. One thing I asked like six questions in one. That's okay. So let's start with um, color and trends. Yeah. So manufacturers have to make things that right. have color in them. Right. Color trends kind of start in Europe. They kind of move through Asia and then they come to the states. Okay. We think that it starts here, but it doesn't, because people are manufacturing things that that are held onto for a long time. Cars are the best example, right? Then that- short, What do you mean by that? Well, cars, you have, you typically have, people have cars- For a cars long time. For years yeah, and years. Yeah, yeah. The color in your shirt, right. you're gonna change that next season, it's not a big deal. Okay. Right? Um, so manufacturers are just trying to get on to the latest, how can we increase sales, you know? Well, the colors come through. There's there's an organization called the Color Marketing Board. I, I I have no idea. Okay, and they look at, you know, in what's going on in the env- environment. What um, kind of, um, you know, geopolitical things are happening? What's happening with the health of the planet? What's happening with the health of people? Um, you know, all these different aspects. The what's the financial outlook look like. So there are all these elements that come into play when the color marketing board says, okay, we think we're moving into this direction. And then Sherwin Williams and Benjamin Moore and all that have their own research Mm -hmm. and they come up with colors. We're doing this or we're doing that. And um, as my mother has always said, it will always come around, which it does. I I know. The 70s are not coming back. I have the orange and the, I don't even know what color green you would call it's that. It's like the avocado green oh, and God. the orange. No. And well, you're going to start seeing bits and pieces because oh, it's going to pull from what was happening. Well, everything comes from everywhere. So I don't want to go down a rabbit hole going in that direction. But I think more importantly has to do with your comment about HGTV. Right. And you know, everything has to be wider, white subway tiles, HDTV, and I've done a number of their shows, so I kind of know, they want to create things to help people sell the house. Mm -hmm. So people now are looking at their house and they're going, well, I don't want to go too crazy because I'm going to be selling it in five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can be selling it in five to 10 years. You're living here. People have become afraid to really discover what they really love. Yeah. Right? What is, what, you know. And I understand that because your personality is. I understand that because your home is is most people's largest asset. Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking, how can I recoup the money? How can I, or how can I not recoup? How can I make. What is going to resell and be, you know, the biggest bang for my buck? Okay. So I, I understand fine, that. Which is fine if you're thinking of flipping the house right. or you're only going to be in it for two years or three years, let's say. Right. But if you're going to be in there for a fair amount of time. Just enjoy it. You can 
repaint. You can retile. You can change the carpet. There, you can make changes. It doesn't. And frankly, the person who's coming in is probably going to tear out your kitchen anyway, right? Because there's new appliances and there's new finishes and there's new, you know, whatever. So just figure out who you are mm-hmm. and design to that. Mm-hmm. You know, let's discover what you love most and where you're most comfortable and when's the last time you went into you know an amazing hotel lobby Mm -hmm. and how did that make you feel and do you want that feeling in your home Mm -hmm. and um you know or a trip you were just on a safari you know and how did that feel to have those colors around you Mm -hmm. so think to your own experiences and to your own dreams and then create an environment where you can thrive like i think that's what people are struggling with it's not as easy they want to be told what to do or they want to um they want to be safe they want to be safe they don't want to be different they yeah yeah right so and i'm and maybe they don't want to make a mis- they don't want to make they don't want to make a they mistake, don't make a mistake. They, yeah. which can be an expense expensive yeah. and it can be embarrassing but i am there to or you know designers or people like me um, guide clients so that they can discover what they really love mm-hmm. because a lot of people just don't know because they've never thought about it like that, right? right. So what is what what are you attracted to and what don't you like? Mm-hmm. What um, you know what's exciting to you? What's you know you could deal with that just for a little bit, but for you know your main part of your home. Or I whatever. think one of the things that I struggle with, uh, and I think some people do, is like. I love 75% of my home. The bathrooms were done 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and they look very Tuscan, and it's just it's not my vibe. But they're in fantastic shape. And the idea of ripping all of that up to retile and do everything, it just, A, it's super expensive, mm-hmm. and B, it's just going to go into a landfill, and it feels really wasteful to me just to like retile something because it's not what I would necessarily choose today. That's a balance yeah. that you have to decide. Um, there probably are ways to, well, it's really hard to take the tile out without breaking them all. Right. But I, And I don't know what kind of facilities are available to maybe recycle them into something else or have them crushed and become sand. So yeah. it could be used as sand somewhere. There's, yeah, I mean, I guess they would they would degrade at some point. There's, but it seems wasteful yeah. where it's like, this is perfectly fine. Why would you do that? And then also like, well, what are my priorities? Like, sure, I would exactly. love to have, you know, maybe something a little bit more me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe I have other financial priorities. If it bothers it. you every time you walk in, mm-hmm. then or if it functions there's something that you wish it did that it doesn't do or that it does that you wish it didn't do Mm -hmm. you know balance that against you know can i afford it Mm -hmm. or can i afford maybe to do it a little at a time yeah you know maybe i design it and i'm gonna purchase you know this that i know is going to go in there but i don't have the um, budget yet to install it, you mm-hmm. know, to tear that out and then install this. But I have that budgeted for six or twelve months down the down the line or whatever. So you could take it in pieces mm-hmm. um, if that is something that you want to do. If it doesn't bother you that much, then that's what you have, yeah. and maybe you um, get a bonus at some point or whatever. And it's like, okay, now I could do it. Right. So start designing it now. Yeah. Right and pull pictures of things that you like or, or whatever so you have an eye towards what you think you might really want. And then when the time comes, it's like, hey, I could do that. Or when you're out and about or you're traveling and you find this you know, amazing cabinet that would make a great vanity, mm-hmm. you know, you could say, ah, that'll fit. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I want is my vanity or whatever. You know, it's- so are there any trends that you do like right now? trends that I like. Well, I like how things are obviously moving more and more towards the environment. Right. Right. So I like the whole concepts of sustainability and mm-hmm. paying attention to where the products are coming from and how they're made and how long they're going to last. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on flooring? 
in terms of like, there's so many different flooring products. Mm -hmm. I was in the Midwest. We just replaced my mom's floors. Um, we looked, LVP is very, that's the laminate mm -hmm. vinyl product. That, luxury vinyl lux plank. Thank you. Luxury vinyl plank. Very popular in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, no one is really doing hardwood floors there. They're mm -hmm. not seeing the value in it. Um, they like the the waterproofing of the LVP product. Um, and that's that just, in terms of resale, that just seems like what everybody likes there. Um, my mom didn't like it, so we wound up going with an engineered hardwood. Mm -hmm. I really like regular hardwood, and I think there's probably, and then there's tile that looks like wood. Like, there's so many options for flooring. Like, mm -hmm. what what are your thoughts on, on flooring right now? And I know um, it's come a long way. Like, some of the original products maybe had some carcinogenic issues with them, mm -hmm. the formaldehyde maybe, and so I know it's changed, like, but what are your thoughts on the options for yeah. flooring? Um, the first thing I would look at is how you're going to use the floors. Mm -hmm. um, if you put tile in your kitchen, your feet are going to hurt. If you, if, you know, if you're cooking a lot, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I am not a fan of LVP or mm -hmm. LVT because what's LVT? Luxury vinyl tile. The tile. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just this same thing. Um, it's not. Well, it's not a natural material. Right. I want to try to keep as, you know, engineered hardwood is great. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to deal with the sanding and the staining um, and all the outgassing from that. Right. Um, and hardwood, of course, is is wonderful. There are a lot of sealants and a lot of um, coatings that you could do that are uh, healthy, healthier mm -hmm. and um will hold up and I like seeing a patina in a house mm -hmm. so you can it's it's lived in it's mm -hmm. not a model home it's not a plastic I like the box. I have marble counters mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a giant marble island and I remember when we when we first moved in and I spilled something and you had that like moment and I was just like well this is, is what it is, is. Yeah. This is this is the the you know this is just what marble winds up looking like, and I'm not going to stress about it. And that said, you can seal it, yeah, right. So if either you want to keep upkeeping it, or you know you just it's going to live with you and yeah. grow and change as as you change. Yeah, I was in France last month. Last month, yeah. Um, and there are these marble stairs that have been there for, since oh Roman times. Yeah. And you can, you're can you stepping in the same steps as, well, even the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci. I was stepping on his steps oh my in gosh. the same marble that was, you know, had a, a divot in it yeah. from, from all these yeah. people walking on it, you know, since then. And, um, you know, looking at Roman ruins that were there. Yeah that uh, just, it, it becomes classic. Yeah. You know, there's a reason that um, there, there are concepts like classical architecture mm -hmm. and why we see certain things as beautiful. Mm -hmm. And those initial um, concepts continue. Mm -hmm. And they're... Um, Do you think we're getting back to that? More, more. I think you know my I certainly opinion. Certainly hope so. Like I'm, I'm all about the classic. Mm -hmm. I toured a home yesterday that was older, um, and it was in Sonoma on Lake Josephine, and had very, like, very much like a New England charm, mm -hmm. shingles, and just tons of detail and lots of beautiful millwork. And you just walked in, and you're just like, this house could be from. I don't even you don't have a sense of time mm -hmm. in a, in the house yeah. does that make sense totally it's That's, it's just beautiful yeah. and time it, it has it's that timeless. feeling of just like timelessness That's there's classic and, and creating and designing something that's timeless is you know wonderful that's why you don't want to get caught in trends you want to cut, get do you think the farmhouse trend is is dying down because I see I that a, a lot. farmhouse works for a farmhouse, right? Right, but like I see... And, but to put up shiplap, you know, it's like, why? Right. It, yeah, that makes no sense to me. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, I mean, I've had clients for over 20 years and they don't want to change anything. Yeah. And that's... 
a th- success. I think that's a massive success. Yeah, yeah. it it is. Yeah. Um, being in Europe, you saw so much detail, so much architectural detail and tile work and um, molding details and hand carved everything, and it it was just gorgeous. It just cost too much. Mm-hmm. And it takes time. They don't make that. They don't make it that way anymore. Well, people don't want to spend the time or the money to, right. to have that done. You can certainly can still do it, and we can still install, you know, beautifully um, carved moldings and fireplace surrounds, and um, it's it's in it's on the market. Mm-hmm. You can do this if this is what you love, mm-hmm. and if it's done correctly, it will last forever, and um, and if it's in your budget. Right. You know, so that would be the ideal, you know. Um, I heard a story, I don't know how true this is, but the whole Bauhaus movement, you know, Mm -hmm. very clean lined and you really can't tell where the door is. And, you know, it it happened in the Industrial Revolution when we could do huge panes of glass and Mm -hmm. huge sheets of steel and things like that. Um, so, So buildings were built like that turns out that a lot of the architects of the time had been in World War II and they hung out in bunkers Mm. and bunkers meant safety Mm -hmm. and a bunker was a long thin um, thing you know um, environment and you really couldn't tell where the door was because you didn't want you know the enemy coming in and think of galley kitchens that Mm -hmm. became popular right and um, think of looking at the face of a really contemporary house that has the doorway underneath an eave like off Mm -hmm. in the corner or something um it's it's not what i think we're organically i think everyone should take like i think everyone should have to take an architecture class i think that if you go to college Mm. okay even if you don't go to college i think it should be something that is taught because what you're describing i mean this is what you do for a living you're Mm -hmm. a professional but oftentimes people don't have the language right. to be able to communicate why something is is beautiful to them. And I think everyone yeah. should have access to that to that language. You like, know, it's a really why do you like this? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, I just do. Yeah. Well, like let's like dig a little bit deeper. Like I think it's good for children to be able to just be able to have more of a a rich a understanding of like yeah. I like this because of this. Like it's just it's, I don't know. It's just it's a better way to look at the world. Well, the more you learn about anything, the more you appreciate it. Yeah. Right. So people who study art really love museums mm-hmm. because they can appreciate what goes into what they're looking at. One little trick to keep in mind uh, regarding beauty is the first thing a baby sees is their mother's face, mm-hmm. right? And they see your eyes and your mouth. Mm -hmm. So you've got this triangle in this particular proportion, Mm -hmm. which happens to be the proportion of um, the golden mean, Mm -hmm. right? And um, Fibonacci's numbers and, Mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, Da Vinci's Vesuvius. um, It's all the same proportions. If you look at classical architecture, it's created from those proportions. Mm -hmm. And you'll see even when a kid draws a house, right? Mm -hmm. They'll draw two windows and the door, Mm -hmm. right? Your eyes and the mouth. And then Mm. building off of threes and um, patterns of threes is one of the basis of of classical architecture. Mm -hmm. So, And that is the basis of beauty. And that's why the concept of beauty throughout all cultures around the world is very similar. Interesting. Because it's it's all organic. It's Mm -hmm. all in our nature. And aligning your biology with your environment, which is why biophilic design is so cool, mm-hmm. makes you happier. Yeah. It's, it makes you feel like you belong. You know, it's an extension of you. I, I horseback ride. And for the first time yesterday, I went um, riding bareback, not, a, not even a blanket. It's the first time I rode completely bareback because it was so hot. Yeah. And we didn't want to put a saddle on my horse and, you know. And it just changed everything because you're just so connected yeah. to how the horse's back feels and how you feel when you're riding. That kind of connection is how we should feel connected to everything around us, yeah. right? And the way to do that is to implement some of these principles and bring, you know, make sure we are 
a part of our environment. It's not just a thing over there. Right. Right. I love it. So, so we have to end. I feel like that's a really good place <laughs> to end. There's okay. more that I want to talk about. Like, I will have to have you back and we can talk about just kind of like the design process a little bit more. Um, but I feel like we we talked about a lot. Yeah. And like, let's just continue the conversation next time. I am happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Emily. This has been fun. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you for joining me today. For more info, you can always find us at yin-project.com. Make it a great day.